Valerie. And I'm DM. Welcome back to our channel. We've all at some point in our lives felt a breast lump and then we just go into panic mode. And I think this is totally normal. But it's important to know that not all breast lumps are cancer. So in today's video, we're going to discuss uh, some of the benign breast masses that we see in our practices. So DM, why don't you tell us about the most common types of benign breast masses you see? Okay, so I get a lot of referral for patients with breast masses and some of the ones that I encounter the most often in a younger patient is a fibroanoma. So a fibroanoma is a benign solid lesion of the breast. It occurs most often in a patient age probably 18 to 35. On clinical exam, I will often notice a very well circumscribed mass that I can define and that is mobile. And most of those patients, when you investigate them with an ultrasound or a mammogram, and especially on the, the ultrasound, they will have a very, very typical uh, appearance. Now, these masses can very, very rarely transform into a malignant mass. However, over a certain size, they can transform into what we call a, a phyllodes tumor, or they could be more uh, compatible with the phyllodes tumor. So those things need to be taken into account when we talk about the treatment for these, these uh, lesions. And so what are the treatment options for fibroadenoma? So patients with a fibroadenoma typically have uh, three options. The first one is an ultrasound follow-up, mm -hmm. and these are done at six months, 12 months, and uh, 24 months. So you have a follow-up of two years, and you have to make sure that the mass does not change either in appearance or in size. Mm -hmm. If it does, you need to investigate it further. The second option is to do a biopsy, and oftentimes if the either the clinical exam or the radiological exam is indeterminate, I may push towards doing a biopsy, so a sampling of the lesion to make mm -hmm. sure it is just a fibroma. And once that is done, we still need to, to do a follow-up. So the ultrasound also needs to be done at 6, 12, and 24 months. And in certain cases, the patient may choose to have it removed uh, for anxiety reasons. So doing a surgery. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So doing a, an, ex, an excisional biopsy or a re surgical removal. Um, and in certain cases also, if the lesion has attained a certain size or I think it needs to be removed, I will suggest the patient to have that done. Okay, great. Um, so are there any other masses you want to discuss? Yeah, so in an older population, the other mass that I often see are cysts. Now, cysts are liquid-filled masses of the breast. Their pathophysiological uh, origin, we think, comes from the breast regressing. And so it the, often... Well, the breast gland, the glandular tissue. The glandular tissue regressing. Mm -hmm. So it is often associated with an older population, 35 to 50 years old. Still not super old, but no. I, know what you, I know what you mean. <laughs> but it's, it's associated with the perimenopausal period. So we often see them in patients nearing the menopause. Uh, now, the cysts can appear suddenly. They can uh, grow very quickly because they, they fill themselves with liquid uh, at a fast rate sometimes. Mm -hmm. And because they are filled with liquids and this causes pressure, the patient can oftentimes report some tenderness. On physical exam, the cysts are uh, when you fill them, they are well circumscribed and they're quite mobile and you can also very well define them. And on ultrasound, they have this typical um, appearance of a dark round hole. Mm -hmm. um, when there are simple cysts, which means there is no solid component associated with them, the treatment is actually to just observe. You mm -hmm. don't need to treat them, you don't need to remove them surgically. Okay, so when would someone want to have it assist removed? So actually we don't remove them, but mm -hmm. we can treat them and sometimes if the patient has pain or if the cyst is very big and distorts the breast, the patient may want to have it removed and what we do then is we put a needle in and evacuate the liquid in the cyst. So like an aspiration? Exactly. Okay. Do you encounter any other types of benign masses in your practice? I do, I do. I often um, also encounter patients who present with papillomas. 
Now, uh, the reason why I think it's important to talk about this is that patients who do present with papillomas often present with a nipple discharge. And patients do associate a nipple discharge with something that is worrisome. Mm -hmm. um, but first I'll talk to you about the papillomas and then I'll explain something about the nipple discharge. Now, the papillomas are uh, growth, extra growth, that are within the ducts of the breast. And most of the time they're benign. Uh, now, they can present themselves with a bloody discharge of the nipple and they can be investigated and found on ultrasound uh, by showing a little mass in the duct mm -hmm. or uh, there's a special test called a galactography that we can inject contrast into the duct and therefore see the defect where the mass exists. Okay. Once, um, and most of the time these uh, papillomas are situated very close to the nipple. Now, the, in the vast majority of cases, we will remove these papillomas, but sometimes after discussing with the patient and when the pathology is well defined, we don't need to remove them. Okay. And what about uh, nipple discharge? So, as you mentioned earlier, I think uh, whenever we notice some nipple discharge, we just freak out. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit more about nipple discharge. So nipple discharge can be a normal physiological um, thing about your breast. Mm -hmm. And so we have to uh, separate the nipple discharge into two different categories, the ones that are physiological and the one that are structural. The physiological ones are completely benign mm -hmm. and they will present themselves slightly differently from the structural one. The physiological ones will appear oftentimes in both breasts, Okay. oftentimes comes from multiple duct and also the, uh, the color of the liquid is different. So when you have discharge that is yellow, gray, brown, green, uh, those are completely benign. Okay. The nipple discharge that are structural are the ones that we worry about because it means it can be associated with a mass in your breast. And the structural one oftentimes are the ones that will come in the single duct, in the single breast, and the colors that make us worry are either clear liquid, like water, like water, mm -hmm. or um, bloody liquid. Okay, very good. Um, and so, um, are there? I think one mass that I do actually encounter, one benign breast mass I encounter in my practice is fat necrosis. Do you see some of these? I see them often because, uh, I, and I see them most often in post-operative patients, mm -hmm. and they're quite worried because. Fat necrosis are dead fatty tissues, and those dead fatty tissues often occur either after a surgery um, and, uh, or an injury. Yeah, like a trauma, like let's say like you're... Like falling down and hitting yeah. yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have um, a fat a necrosis, the appearance of it clinically is, the, is very similar to a breast cancer. So mm -hmm. for a patient who had a mass removed and comes back with a mass that is hard, uh, it's often very worrisome. Of course. Now, the treatment of it is to investigate it to make sure it's fat necrosis. Mm -hmm. so oftentimes, on ultrasound, we will be able to determine it as fat necrosis. Sometimes it requires a biopsy, but sometimes not at all. But once you've determined it is just fat necrosis, there is no treatment that needs to be done. So, um, have you had in your practice uh, circumstances, let's say, where a patient comes to you saying that they felt a breast mass or their doctor felt a breast mass and when you examine them or investigate them, you find nothing. Very often. Okay. Actually, very often. So the breast is made of glands and fat and the glands are denser than the fatty tissue and sometimes in certain areas or because of the variation in your hormones, the glands can become uh, thicker mm -hmm. and they give you this mass-like effect and the patients will often report that in a certain area they felt a mass mm -hmm. or their GP felt a mass and they will come in panic but when you investigate these cases with an ultrasound or a mammogram you don't it doesn't lead to a real mass because it's just dense breast tissue I think that patients need to be aware that that is possible now if they whenever you have a breast mass or you have a breast concern, you have to be seen by a doctor, right? and you have to be assessed. And Absolutely. I think when I assess these patients, I always acknowledge 
I always acknowledge their symptoms and I always make sure to ask them where is it that they feel it. Now, on palpation, on clinical examination, sometimes you can determine that this is unlikely a real mass. I always make sure that I complete the exam with something else because mm -hmm. my fingers are not, you know, miraculous. And they of don't, course. They, they, they don't they're give not me sensors. answers. <laughs> they're not sensors and they're not going right. to give me the full answer to it. But I think that if the investigation is complete and both the, the clinical presentation, the physical exam and the radiological exam are all concordant mm -hmm. and there is nothing suspicious, the patient can be reassured. It is normal to feel sometimes like variations in your breast, but a real breast mass that appears will always stay there. Right. It rarely disappears. Right. And it's not something that you can feel one day and not feel the other day, mm -hmm. and et cetera. Mm -hmm. But again, I stress, if you have a breast concern, go see a doctor. Absolutely. Don't try to diagnose yourself at home with what we said. Of course, definitely. Um, are there any other masses you want to discuss today? A lot of the other pathologies that I want to discuss are often found on breast screening exams that have led to biopsies. Now, these can range from radial scar to sclerosing adenosis to metaplasia, hyperplasia. But there are quite dry subjects, so we're going to leave them in a table. So if you want to consult them, you can take a look at them and see what they mean and what is their treatment. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember that the, uh, the breast pathology span a large gray area between a normal breast cell and a cancerous cell. Mm -hmm. And not all of these pathologies are malignant. Right. So, you know, don't... It's important to be aware of your breast and to address and to address changes, changes. Mm -hmm. but I think that you don't necessarily need to panic every time you feel something. Okay, well, thank you, VM. That was very helpful. I hope you also enjoyed this video and learned something today. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave them in the comment box below and we will answer your questions. We'll see you next week with our next video. Thank you. Bye.